Aloha. 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 Oh, my. No person is better than Honolulu did on that one. Aloha, Yaka. There you go. Uh, I'm Barry Stiglitz. I'm here to welcome everybody to the fifth quarterly Ed Talk sponsored by the Region 1 Diversity and Inclusion Work Group. The sponsor of these events was formed in 2011. It's comprised of employee volunteers and department certified diversity change agents. We have two here in the Pacific Islands. That's Lorena Watt and myself. Our purpose is to include inclusion in every part of our work every day. The purpose of the DIW is to provide independent advice and recommendations to the regional director on issues related to diversity inclusion in the workplace. One of those recommendations was these TED Talks. TED is short for Employee Diversity and Discovery. The talks are similar to the well-known TED Talks. They will last roughly 30 minutes, and then we have approximately 30 minutes for questions or open discussion. So who's attending their first TED Talk today here in Honolulu? All right, six or seven folks. We broadcast these talks through video so that everybody in the region can see and hear the presentation in real time. They're captioned in real time by our friends at LNS Captioning. That was great. And archived for people so that anybody who wasn't able to attend can see the Ed Talk later. The talk will be available on the zone in just a few days. We're here with the intent that we get to know our employees, our coworkers, on a personal basis outside of the regular position description. Through the Ed Talk, each presenter is to speak about their role in the service, but also really who they are. We want to engage our employees across the region to get to know each other better, personally and professionally. In conclusion of Paulette's presentation, we'll have a Q&A and the discussion facilitated by my DIW colleague in Portland and host of the first four Ed Talks, Chris Logan. If you're using the video system, please ask any questions you may have in the chat section of We'll address all questions at the end of her presentation. And for your attendance today, you may claim one hour of diversity credit. And now to our featured presenter. Paulette has been with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for 17 years. Prior to joining the service, she held several retail positions and also worked for both the Army, Navy, and the Small Business Administration. <laughs> She's held several positions in the Pacific Islands Fish and Wildlife ES office here in Honolulu. She started as an office automat automation clerk and after a year became an office assistant and held that position for nearly a decade. She worked on the current system, no small feet, and an office this large. Correspondence, Freedom of Information Act, and Personnel Act. In 2012, she became a grants and agreement technician, and most recently in 2014, became a purchasing agent. So I worked with Paulette for almost 13 of her 17 years with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and despite our long work history, learned some new things about her just yesterday while going over her presentation with her. And that's the whole point of these Ed Talks. You can work for somebody with somebody for 13 years and there's still important parts of their life that you don't know because we don't have time for those conversations sometimes. So without further ado, please join me in giving a warm aloha to our very own Paulette Hernandez Reyes. Um, thank you everybody. Uh, I'm so happy and honored to be here today. I just wanted to say good morning. Buenos dias and aloha kakahi aka. I'm Paulette I'm the Puerto Rican lady from Hawaii with a French name who doesn't speak Spanish very well. I know some words and knows how many words. So on the top of my presentation, you can see there's three flags there. The first, of course, is the American flag for a great country, and the second stands for my Puerto Rican roots that my ancestors came from Puerto Rico and that's what we talk about and also my beautiful home now in Hawaii and uh, I, these, these three flags are entwined, they're in my heart, they're part of me and they, um, they just make me what I am today. Without coming to Hawaii, I, you know, my life would be pretty different, I'm pretty sure. 
Um, throughout the generations, our ancestors have always stressed the importance of family to us. I'm a product of the housing project in Coro Housing. We uh, lived in the valley, and uh, my, dad, my dad was uh, worked hard. He was a piece of automobiles, and my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and they, our parents were always there for us. And they were really old-fashioned. I mean, they uh, they told us to go and, you know, appreciate everything that we had, uh, our food, our clothes, most of all, the love that we had growing up. And uh, we're close to it, and we always work. We we'll always will be. <laughs> Family is, has always been important to me in America, in Puerto Rico, and here in Hawaii. The family, the familia, the ohana, they're all important. Next slide, please. Really? Yeah. Okay. Many of uh, many of us have uh, stories, our own stories, about how our ancestors came to Hawaii from another place. There are so many local families that can relate to my story: uh, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Filipinos, the Portuguese the German and, of course, Puerto Rican and others that came to Hawaii to work in the teen fields. Over a century ago, ago on Christmas 1900, the first of our ancestors came to the islands. They had to travel from Puerto Rico to New Orleans on a ship, and then they got on a rail car that took them to California, and from California, they took another ship to bring them here. The trip was long and hard, and many were beaten and starved. They uh, didn't have a good beginning before they even got here. It was pretty bad already. Many of our ancestors were dark skinned. Some of them from working in the fields, but some of them that was their natural color. There, there was a lot of uh, physical and verbal abuse, discrimination, prejudice along the way not just by the plantation owners, by the other ethnic groups, because the darker you are, the more you're going to experience that. Some families were separated and were sent to the four main islands, Oahu, Hawaii, Maui, and Kauai. Our dad's family settled in Maui. Uh, our mom's family settled here on Hawaii, Oahu. During the plantation days, they were segregated by their culture. They each had their own camps, and it was not an easy time for, for any of them. There was a lot of um, differences in their cultures and their faith, and so um, it took them a while to get adjusted and to get along to where we are today, We're pretty much blended. Here's a picture of some of our ancestors who came to work in the king fields back. In, after the um, two hurricanes had devastated Puerto Rico at that time. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Got it. It may just be making its way to you. Okay, got it. <laughs> Puerto Ricans are a mixture of three Taino, that's the Indian. Spanish and some African thrown in there. No one, not one or the other, but all three are what make Puerto Ricans. In our family, we have a range of very dark skin to lighter skin, and the eyes range from brown to hazel, and our is a plethora of <laughs> different textures as you can see. The straight, eight, curly, kinky, and the color of from black to one and everything in between. Um, our island is a melting pot, not just here, but Puerto Rico too. As the generations go, uh, we are we become more blended. And so um, in my family alone, we have Filipino, Japanese, Mexican, and who knows what else next. So next slide, please.
No, no. <laughs> paternal. Sorry about that. Okay, paternal. Here we go. Okay. My paternal grandmother my dad's parents. A short time after my grandmother, Lisa, teacher there, gave birth to her fifth son, she passed away. My grandfather was unable to care for five sons and go to work. At that time, it was customary to give your children away to the godparents. That's what they were there for, like a backup. And so um, my dad and his uh, oldest brother and one and his youngest brother went to the godparents. And what the middle child, it was the middle child that adopted. <laughs> he got legally adopted by a Portuguese family and um, they, it was pretty sad because even though they all were on Maui, the family kept my Uncle John away from everyone because they didn't want him to know that he was Puerto Rican. They just wanted him as Portuguese. He was a light skin, light hair, light eyes, so he blended. He was in like Flint. <laughs> so even though they were on the same island, they didn't get to see each other. So um, after, oh, and then my uncle Raymond was taken care of by my uh, great grandma Louisa. Okay, so okay, where was it? Okay, so um. In a few years, Grandpa Alfonso remarried and uh, to my grandma Matilda. I didn't picture her here, but they began a family of their own, consisted of four daughters, and they had another. Son. They had a son. So now my dad was one of six boys, and uh, then around 1955 or so, they adopted my auntie Marie, who is my age. Next slide, please. My maternal grandparents and my mom's parents. My grandmother's name was Alfonso, but the plantation owners didn't like that name, so they changed her name to Florence. She was the eldest of nine children. My grandfather, Placido, and my grandmother, Florence, got married really young, and they had six kids. My uh, Grandpa Placido was killed in an auto accident when my mom was a teenager, so she had to quit school and help to take care of. She became the mother hen while my grandmother went to work. Uh, then my grandmother, Lawrence, remarried to Grandpa Harry, and we don't have pictures of that because you know, we're not making a book. Uh, they had, <laughs> there was. Um, they had three children, and my late aunt was six years older than me, and my uncles are one and two years older than me. I even went to school with the youngest for a short time, and that was no bueno, just trust me. <laughs> I remember when I was 10, I went to San Miami, California to visit my grandma. We were walking one day um, by the train tracks and just talking, and all of a sudden, uh, I saw Grandma, look at that. That's the biggest dragonfly I ever saw in my life. And she laughed. That's a hummingbird. That was the first time I saw a hummingbird. I fell in love with them at the time. But when it came home, of course, in Hawaii, we don't have them. When uh, later, when 30 years later, actually, when my hubby and our two kids and I, we were living in he was stationed in uh, Chula Vista, California, San Diego. We saw hummingbirds everywhere, and that's when I started my collection. And they were everywhere in my house, my cubicle, and almost everyone who knows me sees a hummingbird and thinks of me. I think that's kind of neat. <laughs> okay, so next slide, please.
<laughs> it's okay to start talking before the slide comes up. Oh, okay, okay. Well, the next picture is going to be about my dad's and my parents. There they are, uh, Grandpa Eduardo and Grandma Emiliana Molina, our dad's and I's adopted parents. So at five years old, my dad went to live with the Molinas, and they told him that his last name is Nana. So from then on, my dad was Paul Hernandez Molina. He carried Molina for 29 years. His eldest brother, George, kept telling him, your name is Hernandez, you're not Molina. They didn't, they didn't adopt you, you gotta change that. And my dad's like, you know, so bad and all that, you don't wanna do it. So finally, my mom and my grandma, my paternal grandma, went down to the, uh, in front the bureaus by the statistics and said, okay, we're looking for records of Paul Molina no such a person. So it was discovered that adoption papers and after 29 years of being moving, my dad um, and my two brothers and I had our names officially changed on our birth certificates. So it was a good thing that he carried Hernandez and they all they did was just cross out the Molina and there we <laughs> That was the paperwork that was done back in the day. <laughs> as a child, um, it didn't affect me as much because I just accepted them as my grandparents. I loved them and changing the name didn't change my love for them or anything. And when it first happened, they were devastated. My grandparents were devastated. They, they were like, but then, you know, afterwards they got used to it. So it, it was an adjustment they had to make, but it was, I think my dad did the right thing. My grandma Molina, well, my grandfather died early, but my grandma Molina, she uh, lived to 92. And she was our energizer one. On her 90th birthday, we threw a party for her, complete with a live Puerto Rican bag. And she danced all night. <laughs> During Christmas, when we went to her house, it was transformed to a wonderful little gingerbread house. So we had anything a little kid wanted to eat, candies, cookies, you name it, goodies galore. And when she gave you hugs, you knew you were loved. And we loved you. Next slide, please. Okay, believe it or not, is my wedding picture. Uh, my husband is a Vietnam veteran, and he was in the Army, he got out and worked construction, and then shortly after we married, he joined the Navy. And we traveled to California, Guam, we were here 10 years, he went from ship to shore, and then the last duty station, we went back to California. Uh, when he, after he retired, he became a tour bus driver. He really enjoyed it, but then he retired from that. And now he just, he doesn't have any dues and he, <laughs> he's a bagger. He, he bags groceries as a pro hobby commissary. Uh, just to note that dress that I'm wearing, that gown, I sold that for my wedding. But now I have a hard time even finding the, you can't even get the thread inside the needle. <laughs> Come with a so my husband and I, last year, we decided, hey, let's go to um, Vegas for our 40th wedding anniversary. And we went to the Elvis Chapel, and we got our bowels renewed, and it was, it was a kick. And I said, God, you guys in here, not 40 years old, huh? <laughs> Next slide, please. Well, the next slide is going to show, okay, that's my son. I was born in Guam, Prescott, and um, when I, I was in Guam and my mom said, I want to throw her, a, she wanted to throw me a shower, but what she did was she did a long distance shower where she invited all my closest family and friends 
they got together and um, they, when he, when my son was born, my mom came to Guam and she bought all the gifts. She brought the centerpiece. Uh, she brought a piece of cake and all the pictures that were taken and it was something to behold that I never forget. It was great. A year later we came to Hawaii and I had another package <laughs> with my daughter. <laughs> Uh, the other special delivery, and I, I've been blessed. Um, the deal with that my husband and I had was, I'm going to stay home with my kids until they go to school. But I stayed home with them 13 years, so I guess my math was kind of off. <laughs> as long as he was active duty, I stayed home with them. I used to sew and do crafts and. Uh, before he retired, when we were in uh, San Diego, I took some computer classes and here are Spanish. So I'm just going up to be dangerous. <laughs> Next slide, please. So the next slide is going to show uh, all my life, my dad had been looking for his. Well, my dad and his brothers had been looking for Uncle John, and unfortunately, in 1994, my uncle George passed away, so he never did get to meet his brother. But um, we did. Four years later, uh, we were able to meet our Uncle John, and it was such. I mean, it was. As soon as we seen him come out of the pain, we knew that was him because was grandpa. And we just was like, look at him, he looks like grandpa, you know, and, and he talks like him and everything. It was just really surreal. But he had been um, in the Air Force and overseas a lot, so that counts for why some of the time we probably couldn't find him. <clears throat> but we, um, we just were so happy to be reconnected to him, and um, he currently um, he currently lives in Arizona. See, even though my dad and his brother were not raised together, they have the same love of music and uh, same kind of music. I don't know if that's just from the generation or what. And they just love cars, and they had a lot of uh, similar um, things that they enjoyed. And um, Uncle Uncle John actually plays the ukulele, and he was in Hawaiian bands on the mainland over the years, and um, it was just something you know really special to to meet him and um, to know that my dad you know was finally all these years waiting to see him and you know finally came came all together and it was just great. And then came the funny part. My Uncle John, who was led to believe that he was Portuguese, had to call all of my cousins. They were grown up now and married. Most of them were married. Had to tell them, oh, oops, no, we're not Portuguese, we're Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty interesting. Uh, next slide, please. This right here is my two uh, my two grandsons, Donovan and PJ Prescott Jr. Um, grandsons, you know, grandkids. I mean, when you have kids, you're excited. When you have grandkids, you're ecstatic. You just and that's why they call it grand. <laughs> Those two grands, I love you. <laughs> Next slide, please. In 2013, her mom suffered a massive hemorrhage of the spine, and we almost lost her. Since then, she's been wheelchair bound, and she lives in a nursing home because she needs going for our care that none of us can do. And so on August 26, 2015, we got together and threw a party for them with all their friends and our family and it was um, a big celebration we had for them. On our dad's cake, we had a picture of Fonz 
and his motorcycle king. Some of you guys don't know who Fun is. Because <laughs> our dad used to um, have a motorcycle and have that do. But um, if you're not old enough, uh, just think of somebody like um, Elvis Presley or, you know, a lot of grief. Think of grief. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's what's going on over there. <laughs> it, was a, it was a really good party. I mean, you know, everybody was surprised to see my mom, how well she's doing. I mean, she's being well taken care of in her facility that she's at a couple and we're just thankful that we could find a good place for her to be. Uh, next slide, please. Another lifetime event was our trip to our homeland in December 2012. When I walked the streets of San Juan, it all came together when I saw all those buildings, the red, the purple, the yellow, the green, all those bright, crazy colors. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> I see what it's in my jeans the whole time, right? <laughs> so, um, as we traveled around the island, we were able to visit the towns where our ancestors came from, such as Ponce, Arecibo, and Yauco. Uh, we saw so many similarities in Hawaii, between Hawaii and Puerto Rico. It was uh, almost like, it was, I think it's, the way I think about it is our ancestors lay, left an island paradise in the Atlantic and then came over and found another island to be their new home in the Pacific. And I think that is so awesome. And uh, the only difference that I can think of, we have better weather, according to Guy Hockey, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have iguanas, we don't have snakes, but shucks, they have hummingbirds there. <laughs> we had such a great time. We had so much just fun, laughter, food, the music it was awesome. It was a true adventure that we loved that I love and it will be in my heart and my mind forever and I think we went at the right time it was Christmas and they just pull up all the stops when they celebrate if anybody been there to Puerto Rico during that holiday I mean it's everywhere it's in the air I mean there's no snow just like here but you can see the celebration going on okay next slide please There was such a thing as time travel. I would like to jump in that door right there and go back and give my ancestors a big hug and a thank you for all their sacrifices that they made for us to be come here and have a better life. And um, also to tell them that in 1972, our family moved out of the projects and moved to Lava Beach to our brand new home. And that was quite an accomplishment and we were so happy, I mean, that we could call our own home, you know, have our own home. And at that time, um, when we moved to Lava Beach, the, everything in the back, our backyard was just came through. And now, it's the Hawaii Prince Golf Course in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so time change, right? So I would like to tell them that we have assimilated, we have prospered, and we just keep the, our, uh, we still keep in our culture and our music and our, the food and the dance. We, we can never forget the food, right? <laughs> and um, I would uh, tell them that the local people love our music and food too. So, um, just a word, I mean, I don't want to get political, but a word about Puerto Rico today. History repeats itself because the island, as we all know, was ravaged by two hurricanes, and that's what brought my ancestors here. And now it's happened again. And the total amount of people 
that the left behind us, the left Puerto Rico, is upwards of 300,000. Many parts of the island are still in that. That is a crunch. It's so very sad for me, people. I just pray for relief for them. And um, I just I just want to leave it at that. I don't want to go deep or anything, but I just want to say, I just want to thank you all for taking time out of your day to listen to me, Puerto Rican lady, telling you about my story, my ancestors coming here. So thank you, muchísimas gracias, and much my heart. strong family bond. So what is the best part of what have you learned over your life that that you that you see um, contribute to where you are today? Well, it started with our parents, right? I mean they're the ones that uh, taught us to respect people and to to work hard and things will come away because my dad worked very hard and he was the sole sole source provider, right? He still did get a house. So that's basically that's in a nutshell. Just work hard. That's it. Determination. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I got to say this part too is that when I was younger I didn't know what I wanted to do. I tried different jobs. And then I was like, no, I don't want to be a driver. And then I was kind of rolling things out. I don't want to be a teacher. I was a substitute teacher for a little while. No, 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 that's not for me. So, you know, just trying different things and finding like, I think I belong in an office. So I'm there. I'm there at night. Excellent. Any other questions? And we're going to speak up, please. Go ahead, Christine. Hey, Paula. So you mentioned right there at the end uh, the food as part of the culture. So could you yeah. talk a little bit about oh. Puerto Rican food? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I, I love I love cooking myself. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So the basis of my grandmother always told me the basis of the Puerto Rican dish is your sofrito. You have your onion, your bell pepper, your parsley, and your tomato sauce, your garlic, and whatever you know uh, sauce. I mean uh, seasonings you want to put in there. Uh, a lot of times we use tomato and other, you know, I have recipes too. But um, basically from that, you can get any meat and then you create your dish. Like uh, if you want to make chicken soup, chicken soup, right? You get that sofrito, you, you're going to brown your meat and get and put it all together and you got that. And it's like magic. <laughs> Any other questions for Paulette? Nadira, please speak up. Paulette, um, mm -hmm. when you went back to Puerto Rico, did you meet people that you were related to? No, we had kind of lost that trail along the way a hundred years ago. So, <laughs> um, we just decided um, instead of trying to look for, for a family, um, just to go to the town and to kind of just think about all that. So there's like um, certain, like our family didn't come from that area, but some of our friends' family came from the mountains, and the people that live in the mountains, they call them Hebrews. It's something like hill <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I mean, it's. It's just they're hard working. I mean, they're it's just that they're not in the town, you know, um, working a white collar job. They just work in the fields or whatever the case may be. 
I remember my godfather said that he went to, um, when he went to look for his um, my aunt's um, family, they had a little thing guy. I was like, what is a thing guy? He said, it's like a crop, but it's small, just like for a family farm. That's what it was. He said, she said, yeah, they were poor. And, so, you know, and I think my uncle said that we, somewhere along the line, we had a, we had a store, some kind of market in there, but I don't know. That was, that was then, and this is now, I don't know. Yeah. In terms of uh, Puerto Rico, have you, uh, what, place, what places in Puerto Rico that you, you noticed, like no Junque or um, some? Oh, well, Junque was fabulous. I mean, and when I was walking, you know, that's the that's the national forest, right? And uh, I kept hoping I would spy a hummingbird somewhere along the way, but no, <laughs> wasn't it me? Wasn't it me? But it was really pretty. I mean, it was. And the waterfall on the outside, and it was really, really something. They want to scare the living daylights out of me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something else. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a bleep function. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I, we saw one that was huge, and we thought that it was just like, we thought it was, we didn't think it was real, let's put it that way. And then it started to move, and we were we jumped. <laughs> and they, they they found out like we were talking like about it, and my brother was telling me that they can run like 40 miles an hour, and they got like just claws and stuff. And sometimes if you're standing there, they're trying to climb on you because they think you're a tree. Oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm big, but I'm not. <laughs> Well, when we were talking yesterday, you had an experience making pastel. Yeah. And, and I think that's an experience a lot of people have had, but with different food items. Can you talk a little bit about pasteles that they sell here on the roadside in Hawaii? Oh, okay. Please. Yeah. So, my grand, or, you know, for holidays, special occasions, maybe Christmas or whatever the case may be, we have the assembly line, the work crew, we get together, and as soon as we get in the house, uh, my grandma's house, my mom's mom, uh, we hear the Puerto Rican music already. It's like, you know, all right, come on, let's go to work. And um, we all had jobs to do. And um, of course, my mom and my grandmother was like chopping vegetables and meat and stuff. And then my job was grading, and they called it bajando to, to grade. And um, I would, I would, um, with the music, you know, just go and it, it didn't seem like work <laughs> until you got your fingers crossed. You know? <laughs> and then it was kind of like that. Then grandma was like, out of here, no blood, get out. The next person. <laughs> so, <laughs> lucky we had a lot of recruits here. <laughs> but as soon as we came in, she's like, if you don't have a kerchief, she doesn't even you know it's a kerchief, right? <laughs> it's like a scarf. If you don't have a kerchief, you can't work in a line. Okay. And if you don't have one, she had a <laughs> So um, after the work and, you know, we, of course, some of them will get frozen and then some of them will get eaten because the work who needs to get paid, you know? <laughs> so it, was, it brings back a lot of memories when I see, um, you know, I don't really make it because it's so work intensive. But I, I know people that make some good ones, so why should I make it if I can buy <laughs> But my husband, you know, he is, he's half Puerto Rican and half Filipino. And so he, he's got like, he can cook some good Filipino food, but he also, my mom taught him some recipes. He must have. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll be telling you, mm, you know what I want to eat? Okay, where do you want that? Um, hey, as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have any other questions here in Honolulu for Paulette? Otherwise, we'll turn it over to Portland and folks online. All right, Portland, it's all you. 
Chris, Chris, your mic is open. You guys are you guys are on. So if you have any questions, go on. Yes. You know, your mic still may be muted there locally. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, Paulette, thank you again so much. It was this was the first time we've done anything like this, where we're actually sitting in a room, listening to you guys in the islands, but hearing such a wonderful story. And um, um, first of all, before we open it to questions here in discussion, I want to know who in the service reminds you most of the fogs. <laughs> <laughs> the bond. The service. Yeah. Oh, the 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 reminds me of the bond. The bond. Uh, I, I'm John of Lang right now. <laughs> That's okay. You can tell us all later. Um, I think it's but, Chris. Um, but I just want to say. Um, <laughs> that is one of the super dudes. <laughs> I was thinking very too. But um, one of the things that struck me about your presentation is that um, you really encouraged all of us to embrace our ancestry and embrace our heritage. And what sort of advice could you give to the rest of us to really dig back and embrace that ancestry and kind of just live with our culture that we have? Well, I think that, um, like for me, if you do what I did, like my family has been important to me since day one and you know because my dad because he didn't he wasn't brought up with his brothers he always stressed to us the meaning of family you don't know how lucky you are to be raised among your real siblings when I you know had to be with my step uh, siblings who's nothing against them he loved them but he didn't know where his real brothers were so you know that was the beginning and then my mom and my grandma they always would share pictures and stories and tell us my grandma had some stories you don't want to know that oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she was wrathful let's just put it that way <laughs> but talk to your the older folks they're the ones that have some kind of history they know well they're still around actually and then I want to open it up uh, to anywhere in, in this room, Portland, just to, if there's any questions or discussion points that we want to start with Paulette, I'd be, be happy to take those right now. Any questions or anything you strike yet? Cindy. Hi, Paulette. Cindy Berry here. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Um, Hello. Aloha and mahalo, Nui Loa, for your wonderful presentation. You mentioned about your family coming over in 1900. Yeah, I think you had it, you might have cut out a little bit as the reason why. Was it a part of a bigger group? Okay, so in uh, 1900, right before 1900, we had two hurricanes that devastated Puerto Rico. That's why I said that history repeats itself. And so at that time. Hawaii needed workers, and they were trying to get workers to come to the field, uh, to the cane fields. And so the call went out, and being that they didn't have any work, they came. And have you found other Puerto Rican heritage people there as a result of this? There's about 30,000, or give or take. 30,000 people on the island of Oahu? The Puerto Ricans that came and then you know now they're all blended so you know there's probably more out there because wow. no one's hardly ever pure anymore a pure Puerto Rican mixed with everything now yeah can you speak to a little bit of that about you know you, you and I spoke about how the Puerto Rican influenced uh, Hawaiian music and Hawaiian food yeah. can you speak a little more to the music well I just wanted to um, share this if I could Maybe I need to come closer. Kachi <laughs> 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 Kachi music, my oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not here to sing. I'm just <laughs> Uh, 
really well. I mean, this is from Maui. Maui has a town called Makawal, where there was a lot of, there is a lot of Puerto Ricans that gather and get to parties and have the food and have the, the music and the kachi kachi actually, that um, was the saying that the Japanese gave to the sound of the music and I believe it's because the guido has like a scratchy sound so they hated it <laughs> <laughs> but oh well <laughs> A guido is, a, is like a gourd, and it's hollowed out, and it's got um, grooves on it, and then you can use either a fork or some kind. Usually a fork is what they used to use and, uh, to make that scratching sound. They have different ones now. They have like regular stainless steel one with a special fork. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, back in the day, it was just a gourd. Anybody else have any questions? I got one. I mean, I got another one. I'm going to walk up there, though, because I'm pretty sure she won't be able to see me. Can you hear me, Paul? Yeah, just talk about it. Um, could you tell us who that artist was again? And then my question is, of Puerto Rican, Hawaii, Hawaiian, and um, gosh, like, what, what's your favorite cuisine? Like, you had Filipino in there, too. so. It's not I a trick question. No, I love it all. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the cuisine. That was Willie K. And Willie K. And it's Kachi Kachi music, Makawal. <laughs> when, we put, when we post that on the zone, we'll post uh, the name of the music because you got everybody in here dancing a little bit. So. <laughs> And uh, I'm, I'm wondering, too, just to uh, stick back with the diversity uh, part of this, is, um, you know, you mentioned your Hanai and how that has really become your, your adopted parents, your family, and how that, that really was your family. How do you see Hanai working out in the workplace and with your friends, and how important is that, you know, especially because you didn't get to meet some of your true family until later on in life? Well, Hanai is... is uh really important, not just to me, but to all the people in Hawaii that know about it. I mean, it, and yeah, at work, we have all different personalities, like every family does. We got, you know, all, all the different range, <laughs> but we get along. But. Paulette, uh, I was just wondering, has it been a big emphasis for you to um, educate your kids and your grandkids and ca to carry on the traditions and customs and music of Puerto Rico as well? I mean, obviously, why? I try to stress, and uh, my kids are kind of like, no, not so much. But my brother, one of my brothers, I mean, his, my, uh, his grandson, had a quattro made for him, and it's a it's a four string in, instrument like a like a um, like a guitar, a smaller one. And uh, it was special made for him in Puerto Rico. And he takes Skype via Skype in New York. He takes lessons, and he's already learning some songs. And then there's the folklorical dancing that my nieces and nephews did. And then there's the parandas, the Christmas time, the singing the Christmas music and um, going from house to house. And that's kind of going by the wayside, but it was fun when we had it. As the older ones died and the younger ones, sometimes they don't want to, they don't want to pursue that. They got their own interest in, you know. Something, something gets lost. To video games. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, is there any questions uh, on the chat? Nope, there are none. There are no questions on the chat. You did a great job. You answered everybody's questions. <laughs> and, Thank and you. I want to close with something.
that else too, uh, just because again, this is all about um, us getting to know each other on that closer level. It, I see commercials all the time, and for everybody, I see commercials all the time that say, I thought that I was this, and then I did my test on Ancestry.com and I realized that I was this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how often do we kind of look, you know, look at that and kind of think we're something but then realize we're something else? But what advice or what sort of, because uh, that actually did happen to you, what, what, what sort of advice could you give us as far as, uh, you know, just embracing and educating ourselves? Well, it's funny you should say that, but my brother said he was very curious about his background. And so he did, uh, he did a DNA for Ancestry.com and found out the percentage and all that. But it was pretty true that we have all three. And the African is not that much. The Spanish did more. And then we have some. So the Spanish is really strong. And the, um, and the Indian, you know, is in there too. So it's all, they're all there. Different, everybody's got a different amount. I mean, you know, and then as you, you get different, like my kids, my kids are half Filipino. And then their kids, like, you know, they, they're watered down Filipino now. They got more Filipino than Puerto Rican. <laughs> so that's how it goes. <laughs> well, unless there's any other discussion or any other points you want to leave us with, um, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the last thought of the day, but uh, you did an amazing job, and thank you so much for sharing your story. I just want to... I want to thank everybody for the time and the patience listening to my story. And it's a good thing that Barry cut me short because I would lose to be talking. I, <laughs> I, I have so much pictures and you know the stuff to say, but most mostly I got the important stuff out. It's not about. Uh, it was about my ancestors that um, came here, and now we have a similar situation in Puerto Rico again. And so now what's going to happen to them? Um, a lot of people left. I mean, some might end up here again. Who knows? We just never know. But I just I just pray for them. I just hope that everything will work out for them. That's all. Well, thank you so much, Paula. I appreciate it. Since we're all still here, I just wondered if you'd answer one more question. You said that you thought that the hummingbird was a giant dragonfly. How do you really feel about dragonflies? <laughs> <laughs> well, Hawaii had nothing else to compare to it, so that's, that's all I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much. And uh, just so, so everybody knows, this will be available on the zone, and they will have the captioning on them so that uh, anybody with uh, hearing impairments can understand what's going on. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Aloha. 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 Aloha.